Right, hey guys welcome back to another video and uh, today we're going to be talking about tips and tricks that can help everyone out so this is part two if you would like to check out part one which has seven more tips the link will be in the description below i also uploaded i think a couple hours ago so you guys can go just check out my channel if you guys don't want to click any links or whatever right but uh, now i'm going to go over as much as i can and everything will be listed in the description that i go over in this video also, this is as of beta patch 1.4.2, so stuff can change and not work if you are playing in a later version, or if you see this a couple months down the line, right? Uh, so here we go, we got 10 more tips. Uh, this is in no order whatsoever, like the other video. But uh, yeah, let's get to it. So first one, we have, uh, we're gonna begin where we left off at part one. You, uh, you sent out a lot of companion parties because I told you, you always need to have companion parties roaming the map. There's no reason you shouldn't. It is very beneficial to you. Yes, there might be some um, money requirements in terms of wages, but most of the time, a lot of parties are successful and they actually get you paid in the end of the day. Now, you have all these parties roaming around, but you want an army, right? So eventually you're gonna need to form some armies, get your leadership up because the perks of leadership are amazing. Let's go. Let's just check the perks of leadership before we move on, right? So having a high leadership gives you very, very good perks in my opinion. We have bonus troop XP. You're able to convert um, bandits to regular troops, which if you check out part one, I show you how to do it without the perk. Um, and you get just a lot of good perks in my opinion, pound for pound. Plus, a higher leadership will always give you higher garrison size and a higher morale by default. So my morale is always almost, it's almost always 100 because your base party morale is always 50. And then if you get past, I'm pretty sure like 120, this will give you about, I think about 50. So you'll always pretty much be at 100, which is the highest you can be. And it's the most effective when it comes to fighting armies that are either equal to your size or even more than your size you have a better chance to win okay but now let's get back to it so um so you want to start an army so for this take out the companion parties and call them to your army companion parties do not cost influence to call or to keep in your army so uh to up the co cohesion that little bar that you have whenever you're in an army it does not cost you any influence if your um army is completely uh, full of companions, you know, if, if it has some um, variation, like if it has some companions and some other lords, then unfortunately you will pay influence. But if it's just your companions, it does not cost any influence. Also, each party will give you daily influence as well whenever they are in your army. So that's a good way to get influence uh, early on as well as to train your leadership. And obviously, if you are successful with your parties, like let's say you're in an army with your party and you keep uh, winning a lot of fights. Um, the parties will take their cut of the winnings, right? Once they pay off their wages, anything extra goes all to you. Now, number two, companion parties also buy units from towns and villages at a discounted rate and also can buy one troop slot above the player's max. You can send out companions out to recruit and then call them to an army, inspect their troops and take whatever units you would like. So uh, in the part one, I showed you how fast um, your companions actually build up a party. We sent somebody out and two days of me just waiting inside of a town, the person went from one party size to 68. Now, um, what I mean by, I'm gonna go on the map right now. And what I mean by the uh, one troop slot is the game pro is programmed right now as a 1.4.2 and it was confirmed by the devs in one of the um, little patch updates they did on the forums is um, to balance, I guess, how the AI gets uh, troops. Whatever your limit is, your companions can get can uh, take the troops from this slot as well. It's always one above the player. So if I had this open, they would be able to take this guy as well if they were, you know, my companions. And I think a different AI lords as well. But uh, yeah, so... Uh, it's more better to send out your companions to recruit and then uh, bring back units than for you to go on and recruit by yourself. It's a lot faster, and in my opinion, it's a lot more worth it. Uh, now, now, number three, marry as soon as possible. Not for the love or the children. Forget all that. Well, you know, children are cool too. There's not really much of a love feature in this game. But it's for the gear. 
Most wives in this game have mid to end game gear. So if you marry one early game and pay the usual, what, twenty to 30000 to their dad as like a tribute, right? Which is kind of cheap for the return you're about to get. You can trade in your 1K early game armor with your wife's 260K armor, right? Usually, like I've had, what, I think at this point, about five, not five, but like nine to ten playthroughs. Every wife that I've picked, and I've picked out, I'm pretty sure I picked the um, different wives each time. Um, every single one of my wives had about a, a chest piece that was over 200k, a helmet that was over 50k, and just like that, right? And then boom, there's your huge come up. And uh, if you did watch part one, you know what to do with high level uh, gear, right? And how to sell it. It's all uh, mentioned in part one if you want to go check that out. But yeah, marry as soon as possible. Uh, now number four, when recruiting clans, do not recruit minor clans as vassals. They will leave. Um, recruit minor clans as mercenaries and major clans as vassals. How do you check which one's a minor clan? Very simple. You go to your encyclopedia. Uh, press the key N. That's what it should be. Uh, hotkey tube if you didn't change anything. And uh, you go to clans. Uh, if you want to check which ones are minor, you click this one. And these are all the minor clans. So if you invite any of these guys as vassals, they will usually leave. They're good mercenaries. Mercenaries being you pay them for um, fighting for you. And vassals being, hey, they're a part of the voting, they're a part of, you know, they need their own land and all of that. So, don't hire these guys as vassals, but hire them as mercenaries, if you choose. Also, when recruiting your vassals, see how much they want you to pay. So, the less they want you to pay, the bigger chance they will stay in your kingdom. If a clan asks for hundreds of thousands of dinars, do not recruit them, even though you might have the dinars, because they will leave very soon. More money equals bigger chance to leave. So, um, whenever you recruit, whenever you do the speech check to recruit um, a lord, right? Uh, sometimes they will ask you for money. Sometimes they will go for free. Best case scenario, if if they will join your cause for free, they are the ones who are gonna stay till the end. Unless you treat them completely terrible, they will stay with you. The ones that want a lot of money are very against joining you. That's why they want a lot of money. But at the same time, whenever they get even a smaller offer. From a different lord, from a different lord that they might like, they're gonna leave your uh, kingdom. So if the number's too high, just say no thanks and move on. That's you know the best way I could put it. Now um, number six, we have uh, left alt is your friend. It's actually your best friend. I have stated this before. I'm gonna state it again. So in battle and sieges, holding left alt shows the enemy positions. In towns, it shows all the significant people, workshops, and locations. On the world map, it shows a detailed description uh, on enemy and friendly lord troops uh, and how many are wounded and how many prisoners they have. So I'm going to go over each point right now with you, right? So if we see all these right here, if I hold left alt, you'll see their names. Um, and you'll also, let me see if I can find somebody. As you can see, it says 9P. Nine pri nine that means they have 9 prisoners. And also, if I go close enough... I can see exactly what type of troops those prisoners are and also what type of troops they have for their army. And if I can only find one that's wounded, it's usually, yeah, as you can see right there, um, the Shalar, he has one W, which means he has one wounded. And usually when, um, when enemies or friendly lords have uh, the wounded thing, even if it's one or two wounded, that means that not all of their troops are fully healed. So it's a good time to attack. Now, uh, when it comes to towns and uh, pretty much castles and villages and all that, if you go into it, let's go into it. Let's uh, go to the center. Now, if I hold left alt in here, it shows me all the locations and it's a lot easier to traverse the town, right? Because the doing it without this, you're, you, it's going to take you a really long time to find anything, you know, that you're actually looking for. Okay, let's leave. Now, if we hold left alt, as you can see, everything becomes visible to you and it's a lot easier to get there, you know, very easy. And then the last one is the battle or siege. So let's get into a battle real quick. Doesn't have to be a huge one. And uh, just to show you guys, who can we attack? Let's catch up with them. Yep, 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 let's fight. I have a lot of programs on in the background, by the way, so the battle might lag, you know, <laughs> but we'll see if it does. 
But pretty much, see, the battle started. Now, if I want to see how far they are and what kind of troops are where, hold left alt. And as you can see, those are infantry troops. There's 20 of them, and they are about... I don't know if this game goes by meters or feet. I think they go by meters, and it shows how much meters they are away. This is very nice, especially if um, an army, let's say, has uh, horsemen, archers. All of those separate groups get a different um, icon, as you can see. And it shows exactly where they are on the map. So it really helps you to see if some um, horsemen are flanking you and stuff of that nature. So let's take these guys out. They're almost out. There we go. Yep, we're all good on this, all good on this. Okay, so now, uh, number seven, a higher steward equals more party size. So companions with high steward have more party size. Since you only have a limited amount of companion parties that you can have at a time, right? I suggest you get companions with high steward if it is possible. Companions with high steward are spice vendors, which, give, which have 100 steward at the start, and uh, swift, which have 80 steward at the start. And uh, let's look at the uh, steward skill. If we go right over here, as you can see, I have plus uh, 27.8. I'm pretty sure it's um, for every four steward, you get one extra party size. I'm pretty sure that's how it goes. I have a video talking about the math on it, but I think that's very accurate. So you want high steward uh, for obviously your main character and also your companions. And um, this brings me to my next point, which is uh, companions populate the world over time. So if you cannot find a specific companion, check back later, they will probably spawn in. Now, uh, to, to find out which uh, companions are in your world currently, go to the encyclopedia like before. Press the key N, uh, you're gonna go back to here, go to heroes, slide down all the way to occupations, go to wanderer, and these are all the companions that have spawned in your world right now. As you can see, I've had this uh, world for a long time, so I can scroll down. But usually when you start the game, you'll usually have probably like down to here. Like you'll be able to scroll just a little bit, but that's where it will be. And over time, more and more will come. So you might not spawn, you might not be lucky and spawn with a spice vendor or a swift. And then you're going to have to go with somebody else, right? But, you know, more likely than not, you should. So if you do... You can go uh, check where, let's say you want this person, right? It shows where they were last seen, so you can go and uh, recruit them like this, right? And you could also see what kind of different skills they have or their main skills are from this menu as well, as you can see. Now, this brings us to number nine. Food does not spoil, so stack up on it. Villages always have cheaper grain and fish costs, and uh, price prime does not go up when you buy more on like towns. Also, the more food you have, the more morale your party gains. And by more food, I mean uh, food variety. Uh, pretty sure seven is the highest uh, morale gain you can get from it. And I think there's, what, nine different types of uh, food? Don't quote me on that exact number. But I'm pretty sure if you have two different, two different types of food, you get um, plus zero morale. And then every single one uh, after that, you get plus one. So you have, if you have three different types... You get plus one, four different types, plus two. I'm pretty sure that's how it goes. Something of that nature, right? So it says minus two for food variety, so I'm pretty sure I only have one type of food. Hold on. Don't want to give any bad information. Now, I had a video on it, but uh, yeah, as you can see, I have one uh, type of food. If I get uh, two more, okay, so no, my mistake. If you have three types of food, you get uh, plus zero morale, four types of food, plus one, and it goes from there. So if you only have one, you get minus two. If you have two, you get minus one. And if you have three, you get uh, zero morale. Hopefully that made sense. And uh, how I want to mention, if we go to the town, I'm going to show you the price differences here and why you should buy at villages most of the time, right? So if we go to trade in a town and we go to, where is it? Let's go for food. Uh, so the price right now is 22. But as you can see, the more I buy, the higher this price goes. So if you buy in bulk in a town, overall you will pay more and more. Now, if we compare that to a town, I mean to a, a village, buy products, value is 28, but it never, never goes uh, what's called up. 
Uh, in this example, it's kind of bad because obviously it was cheaper here, but, mo but more likely than not, villages have cheaper um, fish and grain prices than towns. Now, uh, our last one, in terms of workshops, tanneries are kings, smithies are, um, are close second, and breweries are an average third. The rest are not good or worth it at all as of 1.4.2. But this can change and a lot has changed in the past so when the game first came out wood workshops were overpowered um completely like this some of them gave you plus fifty thousand, which was you know something crazy after they nerfed that pottery shops became absolutely crazy after the nerf pottery shops tanneries became absolutely crazy so um eventually i think they are going to nerf tanneries and i think someone else is going to take their spot maybe smithies maybe breweries we will see but if you are in the current patch or you know I would test it out with every patch that comes out but if you are on the current patch build tanneries regardless of the spot I had a, I had three tanneries in one town and they were all doing better than let's say one tanner I mean one um let's say like in a place like uh where's Penkanok Penkanok they have two villages that produce uh clay which is good for pot for pottery shops the three tanneries were doing on po uh the three tanneries in my one town that was over uh, over here they were all doing better, like single-handedly. Like each tannery was doing better than the one pottery shop that was over here, which should have done better. So unfortunately, the workshop system is kind of broken right now. So tanneries, smithies, breweries. Those are your go-tos. Don't try to stray away from that as of right now because you won't earn much. But okay, guys, that is uh, part two. That is 10 more tips. Hopefully they help. Let me know. Uh, you know, any concerns, any questions, all of that. And uh, like always, stay safe.